delve, delve into our lesson for this morning. Uh, it's, it's still in the faith series. We've been in the faith since, series since the start of the uh, winter quarter. Uh, before that, it was a love series. Uh, love and faith, uh, what, what uh, they go hand in hand. Uh, and it's very, uh, uh, it's like peanut butter and jelly. Uh, they go together so perfectly. Uh, they're a match made in heaven. Uh, love and faith, uh, according to the amount of both, uh, will get you in heaven uh, if you understand it and use it correctly. And that's what we're here for. We're here to show you the ins and outs of faith this morning. Uh, our lesson today is faith and transformation. Faith and transformation. It's from the book of Romans, chapter 12, verses 3 through 8, uh, with devotional readings in Ezekiel 11, 17 through 21. Uh, background scripture uh, is the same, Romans 12, 3 through 8. Uh, it is a short lesson, but it still has a lot of powerful uh, messages. That's the one thing that's so glorious and wondrous about God's Word. God could speak two words, or a letter and a word, and it could fill a whole nother book of how you have to explain what he meant by it. So when you have, even though you have short lessons, uh, it still does not take away from the powerful message that God is trying to tell you or teach you or speak to you through his word. Uh, since it's such a, a short lesson, I'm going to go ahead and read it, and then we're going to go back through it. I'm going to start off with Romans chapter 12 verses 3 through 8, and it reads through as, as such. Number three, for I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, According as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we, being many, are one in Christ, and every one member one of another. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophecy according to the proportion of faith, or ministry, let us wait on our ministering, or he that teaches on teaching. Or he that exhorteth on exhortation. He that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence. He that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. Amen. God had a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of his holy word. Amen. Okay, today our faith and transformation is the theme to the book of Romans, of course, which was uh, written down uh, as a letter to the church, particular church that is titled after. Paul was writing a letter to the church at Rome. And at, through his travels, he heard 
or he would get reports from the various churches, uh, several churches that uh, he wrote to, uh, one being Romans, Ephesians, Philippians, uh, uh, the several others. But as he did his travels, and he traveled from one to another, he would also receive reports from the heads of those churches or members of those churches about things that were going on in the church that they felt were lacking. Now Paul, paying attention to these, in accordance, uh, wrote his letters back to these churches to address the problems they were having at the side. Now, this particular letter is directed toward the people, first of all, in the third and fourth verses. Paul is trying to relay to them that, uh, first of all, don't think more highly of yourself than you actually are. Uh, doing that is, is a very fine line uh, in the church back then and even the church today. You, know, uh, you might look up and see, oh, uh, the pastor's up there and all the accolades and respect and everything that the pastor receives. You might even think, you know what, I might want to do that one day. I, you know what, I think I could be a good pastor. You know, but God gives his gifts to each of us as individuals. Uh, we have different gifts that we were called for, and it says, by grace. Grace is the blessing or the extra blessing that God gives you as a talent in order for you to serve as people. Now, how can you be a pastor when you can barely stand up in front of people and say two, three words? You cannot look at something that you don't have a gift for. You might strive for it. You might say, well, you know what? I'm going to go to seminary school and I'm going to do this and I'm going to take the steps of being a preacher, then becoming a pastor. But what you don't really understand is, if God's grace is not supporting your effort, you cannot be successful. And even if you did go through the motions and actually get to be a minister or reverend, there's a lot of things about being a pastor or a minister that you just don't know. The first thing is, I'm just going to use this as an example, when you a pastor or a minister, people put you at a higher standard, which means they make sure that you live according to the law of the word of God. You have to be strong in the covenant, you have to be upstanding, even more than the persons or people in your congregation. And also, not to mention, the actually the one thing that I, I have found being a, a, a preacher, a minister, is the fact that the spiritual warfare aspect notches up. You, the, the, the enemy comes after you in every direction. And you have to constantly Stay ahead of them, praying and asking God for the strength to cast off the enemy when he attacks you. And you have to stay in God's grace in order to receive uh, uh, the strength to fight off the enemy. Because when you're fighting the enemy, uh, spiritually, physically, mentally, uh, you have to have the strength of God in order to prevail over it. So that means you have to call and help, call for help from the Holy Spirit. So with all these things that are unsaid about the position of ministry, 
you know, for someone to say, look up and say, oh, you know what, I want to do that one day. Guess what? Unless God comes to you with the Holy Ghost and has a, you have a supernatural epiphany of what your calling is and what he wants you to do, unless he says, I want you to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, then don't do it. Don't think that, oh, I, you know, that's something I think I'd like to do. If it's not in your grace and in your faith that God called you to do something, call you into leadership, call you into whatever department it is, uh, you cannot just think or say, I want to do that. What we have to do is we have to recognize our own individual talents. The, our own individual gifts that God gave us by grace. And what that is too is you have to recognize what you're good at. Some people are good at auto mechanics. You know, some people look at it, scratch their head and say, I don't know how this contraption works. I don't know nothing about it. You could possibly learn how to do it. But if you don't have the gift, you have to admit to yourself, you know what, I don't know. I'm going to have to leave this to the professional. If you try to go ahead and fix a transmission on a car or vehicle and you have no mechanical experience or talent, the end result is going to be disastrous. And that's in a lot of other things. And now as we move down to verse 5, you know, I love the fact where it says, being many are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another. What we do is, I'm, Dr. Tate said a long time ago, he said, you know, God blesses you through people. He sends you people to be uh, in finance or be usher or be in the choir or being a musician. A lot of us can't play the piano. We have no, no inkling or talent or, or uh any kind of inspiration to even do so. But then there are some other people that have God has blessed with a talent. They can play with one hand around their back, play on the piano on two hands with one hand, so on and so forth. You just have to recognize where your gift is and where your contribution is to the whole body of Christ. Yeah. In the body, there's several members. Fingers, hand, eyes, ears, heart, legs, everything, even though they're different, they all work into one purpose, and that is to keep the body moving forward. Okay. So that's how Paul is describing this and trying to give an example to the people that the church is wrong. But the one thing that's beautiful about Paul that I love is the fact that all his letters and the social problems and interactions even within the churches back then apply to the very churches today 2,000 years later. It's the exact same thing. It's very relevant and pertinent because we're still going through the same uh, problems that all the churches uh, in the books of Paul were going through. We still go, we use that as an example. Uh, after we do one thing about the church uh, uh, that we join or the organization that we use in our ministry. What we have to do is find our place. If we're a finger, find out where the fingers are. If we're the thumbs, find out where the thumbs are. If we're the feet, find out where the feet are. If it is our gift, we have to, as individuals, recognize, you know what, I can do that. And that's very easy. It comes to you very easy and naturally. Once you know that you're good at something or you're comfortable with doing something and you actually believe that within your heart that God called you to do it, then that's one of the reasons why when a person first joins church, one of the things they want to say is, 
Where do you want to serve? Where is your talent? What, what do you think or position you like to do? A lot of people say, well, you know what? I sing a little bit. I think I do well in the choir. Or I have official training. Uh, I have a degree in business from such and such university. I'm good at paperwork and numbers and accounting. You know, then boom, I mean, you can, you can pick and choose once you arrive. If you all, sometimes you have that gift already in you and already in your head, but then sometimes it develops later on slowly. It depends on the grace that you have and where God wants to put you. Okay. So we have to figure that out first and foremost. What are we good at? And how can we help our church or our ministry as to where we can serve the Lord the most effectively? Mm -hmm. uh, one, one thing also, I'm going through the lesson, I'm going to go down to eight. Uh, or he that exhoreth or on exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity, he that ruleth with diligence, he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. What that's saying is, after you realize what your gift is, and that you actually choose a department in the church or somewhere that you can serve in ministry, okay, you have to do it with simplicity. And what that meant to me was, uh, just do it for the right reason. Mm -hmm. Don't do it for accolades or attaboys mm -hmm. or for title or for uh, social recognition. Uh, do it with cheerfulness, humbleness, uh, and show of diligence. Those are the words that Paul used. Don't get in and walk into a, 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 a organization meeting. Say, I'll say that I use the deaconess as an example. You, you know what? I was a deaconess at one of my other churches, so I'm going to walk in here and show them how it's done. Mm -hmm. I'm going here and start making edicts and statements that, well, back in my old church, we did it like this. And the way y'all doing it is wrong. You don't go in and try to take over the particular uh, department that you're walking into. You're here. So I'm here to serve. I'm here to help. What do I need to do? Where do I need to go? How? Do you, what time you want me to be there? Mm -hmm. That you're doing that with the right reasoning for serving the Lord. You know, if you serve in the Lord just to have accolades, you're going to be out of place all the time that you're there. Because what you're going to do is you're actually making more harm than good by disrupting the mindset and peace of mind of the other members of that department that have already been there. Mm -hmm. So what we have to be careful is, you know, we also we have to be careful that we're careful once we find our gift as to when we serve, how we serve, and always remember why you serve, okay? Also, uh, one last thing. Uh, it's kind of like you have to, it's a warning of not being too prideful, not to exhort yourself. Uh, that's one thing that is vital to whatever department or whatever ministry you decide to do, you have to have humility mm -hmm. when you're doing your service. Now, a lot of people, they get self-righteous. They start to puff themselves up. You know, but I have to say, and I'm going to say this and take my seat, uh, there's a fine line between pride and arrogance. A fine line. You can have pride in what you want to do or what you're trying to do. But when it seeps into arrogance, it actually defeats the purpose of you doing the task. 
or accepting the position. Because most people, when they recognize that going from the pride side into the arrogant side, they, they realize that, and, ooh, wait a minute, baby. You know, uh-uh, you ain't all that in a bag of chips. You ain't even a munchable. You know, you, you, you need to slow your roll and back up a little bit and show a little humility, you know, and the reason why, you know, all I can say is this, you know, and I'll, I'll throw this to the pastor as I sit down. Was Jesus ever arrogant? Was Jesus ever arrogant? And with that, I'm going to go ahead and take my seat and thank you for your time uh, and interest. To the uh, superintendent, to all of you that are present today, good morning. Good morning. Faith and transformation. Uh, why would the uh, why would the writer of the commentary put it in that, in that order? Faith and transformation. Why not transformation and faith? You got to have faith before you can transform. All right. Right. <clears throat> okay. Now, Paul writes now this letter uh, to the Romans, and when you when you when they when they broke it down, they broke down some things here of how one should behave mm. and uh, how they should conduct themselves. Mm. <clears throat> I want to go over just a little, little, a little more. One is that uh, uh, Minister William mentioned earlier about uh, Members going into members uh, going into various meetings, uh, new members going into the deaconess of uh, the, uh, the finance. Let, let's see what Paul also says to it in the Book of Acts, the sixth chapter. Anyone who going to hold an office, uh, whether it's the leadership, whether it's finances, and anywhere in that area, which means that. They don't hold no office, no matter how well they are, how much they know. They don't hold no office until they prove themselves. Because mm -hmm. when you read when you read that sixth chapter, it says, "Search out among you and find seven men. First of all, full of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Holy Ghost. Who's going to determine whether they have the Holy Ghost or not? That means time is going to tell. Mm -hmm. Time is going to teach you." Uh, who they are, what they're about, how they support the church, how they how they respond to other folks, how they take care how they take care of their own responsibility towards the church and towards the other. So it comes it's a long way, it's a long process of proving. That's why it said prove themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, before they put them in that office. <clears throat> because once you put a person in the office, a person can do a lot of damage in a matter of a few weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, what you have built up, what you have got established. <clears throat> so, therefore, the other thing is, uh, uh, well, people come from other churches and they get a letter to a good standard, et cetera, et cetera, but they're a good standard in that church. Mm -hmm. They're not good standards in this church yet. Yeah. They sign up, okay, so in, in, uh, they, sign, they are enjoying the church, but they haven't proved themselves. Okay, so you can't, you can't go put them in a position until you find out exactly who they are, what they are, what their characters are, and, and they, uh, their mental state. Their mental state, you don't have to go to a doctor. They don't, it's going to tell you who they are. Mm -hmm. Okay, now <clears throat> let's go a little further. <clears throat> let's take a look, take a look at that first verse again. It says, For I say, through the grace given unto me, through the grace, through the knowledge, through the information, through what I have experienced, and what God has given to me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself or herself, I put at herself, more highly than he ought to think. 
but to think soberly according as God has dealt with every man the measure of faith. <clears throat> now notice that deal with that word first soberly. Mm -hmm. What do you think soberly means? Clear-minded. Huh? Clear-minded. Clear-minded. Right okay, that's one of clear, uh, that's, that's one of them. Also, uh, character. Mm -hmm. Right? And also control. Are you with me? Okay, well balanced. So, <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> and also, uh, brothers and sisters, uh, uh, how to how to behave. So when you look at when you look at that word soap, also you put it as soap. How to dress. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so that and so there's a lot. There's a lot. A lot of definition that can go with that word as a Christian. And Paul is saying that the, that the person who is a Christian ought to look at themselves and see if do they measure up to that standard of soberness. Mm -hmm. no, uh, so also in there is uh, 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 alcohol. You know, don't, 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 don't be fooling around with, the, with alcohol and get out of control. But, but when you, the, the other thing that I told you is the main thing that Paul is focusing on with the people at Rome. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because people, people can quickly think that they're more than somebody else. And they, don't, they don't mind telling you in a, in a quick, quick heartbeat, I've been to college. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have a degree. And preachers have said that. Uh, I'm, I, I'm, I'm a pastor. If you know who I am, you would blah, blah, blah. God don't care about who you are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it says, as long as, you, as long as you're a child of God, as right. long as you're doing according to God's plan, you can have all the degrees you want. You can have taught at the most prestigious college in the United States. It still come down. You can be pretty dumb. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you don't know how to conduct yourself. You see, and one of the things that uh, a person not supposed to do is make the folks think that they higher than they are. Right. They got they know more than they do. Mm -hmm. uh, they've been here and there, and you hear them talk. Well, they've been to Taj Mahal. Who cares? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. It's, so who cares where you've been? And uh, you have to talk. Well, I don't visit every 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 state in the union. I don't care. It's still dirt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you see, and so. So you have to look at you have to look at look at look at these things as Paul sees them. Brother, Brother Smith, do you have your hand up, Mingo? Yeah, I was just gonna say um, the the crowd, the church in Rome was mixed, right? There was Jews and Gentiles <coughs> in that church, and so with that with that mixture, you know, there were some different points of views. Mm -hmm. The Jews thinking because they have the, you know that they these Gentiles are new that, you know, that can kind of make people puffed up a little bit or, you know, looking down on certain people mm -hmm. because you're a newcomer to this and we, we you know, and so that, that you know, and to, to stay humble doesn't matter about your pedigree, mm. and it's all level at the foot of the cross anyway. All right. Mm -hmm. You're right, because the Jews thought that once you once you became from a Gentile to a Jew, you need to be circumcised. Mm -hmm. You see, so it's a bunch of a ritual thing that uh, that people had to uh, had to defend as far as uh, uh, what they meant and what they meant to race of people that that came in. Now, let's take a look at that word uh, dealt with every man. The measure of faith. There mm -hmm. with every man, a measure of faith. Now, we know that some people's faith is not as strong as others. Mm -hmm. So, if your faith, if your faith is not as strong as mine, let's use an example. It's not as strong as mine. Then God requires more of me mm -hmm. because I have more faith. If you have more faith than me, mm. God requires more of you until my faith gets stronger. All right. 
Okay, that's why I said measure faith because th that's why the, the book said that when you are when you are a newborn Christian, mm -hmm. you are drinking milk. Okay, you're not eating steak, black eyed peas, collard greens, and turnip. <laughs> just uh, just you know, just an uh, example. Yeah. you're drinking milk because your stomach, a baby's stomach, can't digest collard greens. It's going, it's, it's going to, it's going to cram them, mm -hmm. okay? In the same way it is, same way it is with Christians. Once you become a new Christian in Christ, pounding on, on Sunday morning and preaching the word is not going to get enough in, into you. You're going to have to be, you're going to have to sit down and sit it like this mm -hmm. and be fed the word of God, mm -hmm. explain to you each word, what it means in your life and the life of others that you are associated with. And this is what Paul says, now these folks don't have the faith that you have. Mm -hmm. So don't go, don't go expect them to, to, to believe and do the things that you do. They haven't got that yet. Mm -hmm. Give them some time. Mm -hmm. Are y'all with me? Mm -hmm. Give them some time. Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's move a little bit further. Uh, look at that uh, look at that fifth verse so we being many are one body in Christ All right. and every member every member one of another mm -hmm. <clears throat> so Paul is Paul is uh, comparing the church to the human body mm -hmm. the hand can't do without the what without the wrist <laughs> he can't. He can't do without this. He can't do without the arm. He can't do without the. He can't do without the feet. He has to have all parts of the body. There are some parts of the body you can get rid of and still function pretty well. But if you get rid of hand, you get rid of foot. It's going to limit. It's, it, it's going to severely limit you to what you can do. You get rid of the eye. That's going to put strain on the other eye. Other eye. Which means, brother, brothers, that you're going to have to be careful where you walk and how you turn your head. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? And so, what it's saying here that every part of the body needs each other. That's the way God made it. <clears throat> and God made the church. He made the church so the church can have various entities in the church. Dis yeah. Different, different um, uh, ta talents in the church. Now, if you can't preach, don't be out there trying to preach. <laughs> If you can't teach, don't try to teach. If you want to be, if you, if you, if you a good witness, ninety percent of Christians can witness. Yeah. The only reason they can't witness because they don't want to or something wrong with their mouth. Mm -hmm. So when you when you start studying this this type of lesson, it gets pretty. It, it can get pretty deep mm -hmm. in us. Mm -hmm. And the people who need to hear it naturally, they're not going to be here because they got weak, weak, weak faith. Yes, Graham Smith. I just, I, I just like how Paul is, he's methodical. Like, yeah. He uses the human. So the, the, sometimes when you get to explain the spiritual stuff, it can be deep, right? Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. But to, the simplistic about it, he'll take something that you can identify with, which is the natural body, to explain the spiritual things of God, take something that you can't understand, and then frame it in such a way that you can understand because everybody there got a body and yeah. you know how each member depends on itself your legs depend on your feet yeah. your, your, the upper body depends on the lower body taking if you need your balance so he takes what they can understand and uses things that they can understand to get the point of God yeah that's what Jesus did in parables in parables, yeah, parables. Yeah, in parables. Exactly. Now, the other thing about this uh, fifth verse is that those that are strong mm -hmm. knows those that are weak most of the time. And those that are strong is supposed to encourage and, and build up those that are weak and help them to grow 
and the grace of God without criticizing too much. See, and if you criticize, you need to have a way to explain to them the, which, why, why you criticize them so that they can see and do, and, and do better the next time. Because mm -hmm. see, a lot of folks jump up and say, well, uh, you're not supposed to do that. And they don't say, most people don't say, well, who are you? Mm -hmm. You got to give them a reason why they're not supposed to do that. Okay, and then in this day and age, you got to be careful how you talk to folks when they do wrong, mm. because otherwise you're gonna get cursed out, <laughs> or shot up. <laughs> you see, <laughs> okay. Now, couple couple other things, real quick. Having then, having then, having then, gift different according to the grace of God. I talked, I mentioned that earlier about whatever God gives you, use that. All right. Don't try to use something else or what somebody else has. Mm -hmm. Don't try to be like the Joneses. Yeah. Be like you. Mm -hmm. Okay? And then listen to what it says here in that last part. Let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. Mm. If God haven't given you anything, you ain't gonna be saying nothing. Mm -hmm. You can't go out there and tell folk, well, uh, uh, 100 degrees out there, and uh, it's gonna be snowing by tomorrow night. Mm -hmm. You think they're gonna believe that? Mm -hmm. You got to have, you got to have some faith in God that God has faith in you, All right. that you can deliver to people what God's revelation is in the future. All right. Are y'all with me? Mm -hmm. Okay, proportion, the, the proportion of faith. And then that last, then that last verse, simplicity. Mm -hmm. Simplicity. The, <clears throat> oh, he that exalt uh, exaltation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. What do you think simplicity is? Just Either for people to understand, and somebody else is saying something else. I said, just do it. Do just it. do it. Just do it. Don't make a big fuss about it. Okay. State of being. What was that? State of being. Uh -huh. Okay, that's one. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> State of being simple. Right. Don't try. To fix it. What? Don't try to make it big. Don't try to make it big. <laughs> simple. <laughs> Make it simple, and people can stand. People can understand simple stuff, mm -hmm. okay. And also, uh, 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 intelligence. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of people have a lack of intelligence. If you got intelligence, and uh, you just being you just being simple and plain, people won't understand that. Yeah. You, uh,